Hey, this is Madeline Sklar. And Suze Cooper, and you're listening to All Things Audio. We actually have an extra co-host today. You want to introduce our additional co-host? We do. We have the amazing Michael Sterling, um, who is joining us today um, to help out with the co-hosting. We were wondering if um, both me and Madeline would be able to make it today. And Michael um, it was amazing and uh, said that he would step in just in case one of us couldn't make it. As it is, we're both here. So we're very happy to have Michael here alongside us as well and uh, really looking forward to his valuable contributions to the different stories that we're going to be talking about today. Hello, yeah, hello. Hi, Michael. I'm glad to be here. So let's dive in. I think that the very first, um, the first one we've got here is really quite exciting. This is about uh, the President of the United States coming to spaces. Madeline, what did you think of this one? Yeah, when I first heard about this, I was like, oh, this sounds super interesting. And I was not able to catch it live, so, but I wanted to check the replay. And I was quite surprised when I went to the recording that it only said 1,500 had tuned in. I thought, well, that's a little odd if it's the president of the United States. And then in listening to it, I kind of skimmed through it um, to get to the part where the president was going to be on and come to find that it was all through this now this Twitter account. And so he was obviously piped in elsewhere and it was brought into spaces. Uh, So I was really thrown off by the whole thing. It wasn't what I expected. I think it wasn't what a lot of people expected. Um, Yeah, it was it was sort of unusual. I'm guessing it was one of these simulcasts. I mean, Michael, I know you know more about this than I do, where, you know, you can broadcast whatever it is that you are doing onto an awful lot of different platforms. Is that what what's happened here, do you think? That's what it sounds like. Yeah, they they just sort of piped in their um, brand's audio into the Twitter space. And I think probably what would have really pumped up the numbers for the Twitter space is if they had at least just parked the POTUS account on the stage, even if it was muted, just having it in the space would have brought a lot of people in to listen. And it really would have promoted Twitter spaces and and given it a lot of visibility that maybe it would not have had before. So I, I really think it was a missed opportunity by both the president or the White House uh, that runs the account and also the the people who ran the conversation. But, you know, maybe next time. Yeah, I mean, I think it shows um, perhaps a lack of understanding around how spaces works. I mean, you know, we've been doing this now for over a year and we kind of understand that it's those spaces that have got the the higher numbers are perhaps a bit more visible if they are actually in the space and if better if they have the mic then actually the visibility goes up I mean discoverability isn't great for anybody but you could at least do some of those little kind of foundational things that might just push that space out a little bit further and push its nose above the (laughs) above the horizon if you like so that people can see it so yeah it is um quite quite strange I mean it was a lovely um, tweet from Andrew at Spaces Dashboard that drew my attention to it in the first place, which is one of these beautiful carousels, which I really love, um, you know, really showing us uh, the now this uh, logo, presidential forum with Joe Biden, the time, the date, you sort of scroll through, it tells you all about it. I, th- I think, you know, Andrew had done a fantastic job in terms of that. In fact, he'd done a better job than they had. I think perhaps they could, uh, could have a chat with him maybe. Uh, <laughs> but when it came down to it, you know, there are, there are those other little things that could be done, you know, with someone as big as Joe Biden on the platform to push it forward. I mean, would there be any reason why they wouldn't have wanted to push it out further? I mean, why, why would this not have been like a, a partnership with Spaces, with Twitter themselves? Right. That's what I was thinking, too. But I, I'm thinking that, you know, this this now this... Twitter account that that wanted to have it out through Twitter. Uh, it seemed like it was pushed out from other places as well. And they probably could only get Joe Biden in one place speaking and thought it'd be better to just have it go out to multiple places at once as a simulcast. And maybe they thought that was better than, than you know, than nothing, right? Because, I mean, I don't know, POTUS sitting on a phone on the Twitter app? I, I don't know. I, I, I It would have been really cool if it had gone directly the route like we normally see spaces. Um, but I wasn't terribly surprised. And it definitely makes sense why the numbers are so low. Because, yeah, had it been through the POTUS account, I think discoverability would have been huge. 
Uh, I think it would have just lit up lots of phones and people like, oh, president is in spaces right now talking live. This is interesting. Let's go check it out. So I, I think it's a missed opportunity for, you know, just at every angle of this. And and am I right in kind of thinking as well? I mean, we know that social media platforms generally give advantage to those who are um, posting natively. So, you know, going live just on spaces rather than doing the simulcast. And yeah, I, I totally get why um, this might have been pushed out along lots of different channels. And, you know, they're trying to kind of cover all bases, as it were, and, and reach as many people in as many different places. Um, but for, for, for you and I, or for anyone else that might be thinking about doing that kind of simulcast and, and breaking through different platforms at a time, that surely impacts the um, algorithm and prevents spaces from picking it up as much. I mean, Michael, you've cast across Clubhouse and Spaces, haven't you? And I know you've done that really successfully and seen some really great numbers. But do you, does it impact from that kind of native number that you would get if you were just going live on in one place at one time, do you think? I mean, that's a great question. Um, I, I would say you meet people where they're at. And if, like I said, if you can at least get the POTUS account on the stage in Twitter spaces, um, I mean, you know, maybe they had other things they were doing with it or whatever, but, um, you know, simulcasting, that's a whole other animal to get the audio routing correct and and so on, and they didn't necessarily have to get too complicated with it, but I mean, at least have the POTUS account in the space if if you're going to be promoting it on Twitter Spaces. And I, I mean, I don't know if now this had talked with Twitter and said, "Hey, this is what we're going to do," and Twitter consulted with them or or what. But um, it just that they could have gotten bigger numbers. Yeah, I agree. I and I think I I think the biggest turnoff in the whole thing going through spaces is when we're on spaces, we see the individual accounts, we can see who's talking and to not have that experience inside of spaces for this. I totally understand simulcasting a conversation to go far and wide. A lot of us in live streaming do that. You know, we, we like I do stream yard, but I can push it out to a lot of different places. The thing is, you can't tell if you're watching on Facebook, you watch on YouTube, you're getting the same type of experience, but with social audio, it's a bit different. Although, Michael, you, you you have ways of being able to simulcast in Clubhouse in spaces at the same time, and it looks like you're inside of each one, right? Yeah, and and I am uh, because, you know, I have a Clubhouse account that I run on um, an unauthorized uh, 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 software called Club Deck, and then I use my phone for Twitter spaces. So, I mean, gosh, now this, I, I, I would think, could have looked further into how to make all the technology work so they could optimize how the Twitter space experience was. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. No, I think, I think it's great comments. I think, you know, I'd love to hear what um, anyone that's in the space have got any thoughts on it. Um, when we open up the mics, then please do request the mic and we'll, we'll pick back up on the, on the story. Um, the next few that we've got to chat through here, Madeline, are, are on a theme, shall we say. Uh, these are around... Spaces coming to desktop, coming to the web browser. How exciting is this? Super exciting. I mean, a lot of us have been asking Twitter for quite some time, like to pr please bring spaces onto desktop for us to be able to speak on desktop and to, to you know, do searches, find rooms, um, to do a lot of things, the things that we can do on mobile. And I know a lot of people use mobile for everything. I, I totally get that. But some of us, spend more time on desktop. And I'm one of those, surprisingly, maybe because I'm old school, digital marketing, 26 years. I mean, you know, I didn't grow up like the younger generation where we had computers in school. It wasn't like that till I was older. Um, but, but still, I love my phone. I love having everything on a smartphone. But many times I feel more productive when I'm on a big screen on my desktop computer. And I would love to have the same experience with spaces on desktop. And I would love to be able to speak from there. I would love to be able to do the reactions. I would love to be able to easily search and discover right inside the Twitter desktop. And it's nice to see that they are starting to work on this now. What do you think about it, Suze? Are you excited? 
Yeah, I mean, I've got to um, give credit to Legion. It's his tweets that we're referring to here. I have invited him to the space. I know he's on the road at the moment, so he said he'd join if he could. So he may well drop in at some point. Oh, I can see him there. He's 100 percenting us. Brilliant. Perhaps we can um, chat to you uh, in, in a second around this. But, you know, we've got screenshots here from Legion. This is something that is being rolled out once again to a, a beta group. Twitter is being Twitter and giving it to some people and maybe not everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, we can see different things that they are looking into doing. So, you know, it's a spaces um, tab, effectively, on that left-hand search bar um, that we get on on the desktop. And they are actually going to call it sp- space bar apparently, which is, you know, another tweet that we've come across this week. This could potentially be called the space bar, which would completely confuse me because to me, the space bar is actually what the fleet's bar used to be. So I I think we need more like name convention here, more thoughts around that. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to actually, Legion's requested the mic and I know, as I say, he's on the road and I would really like to talk to him about it. So Madeline, do you think if we open up the mic now for Legion to chat Yes, absolutely, because I would would love to hear his thoughts on this. Let's break with convention. (laughs) Let's do it. (laughs) Look at us breaking our own rules. Hey, rules are meant to be broken from time to time. Absolutely. Hey there, Legion. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, everyone. Greetings. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you for inviting me up. So tell us a little bit more about these screenshots then. I'm, I'm assuming you're part of a smaller beta group, as I've just referred to there, maybe. Yeah, it looks like so. You know, uh, being an Android user, you know, Spaces always used to be uh, quite buggy for me, especially when I used to listen to Spaces. I simply navigate through my desktop and it was a random day like uh, four days ago. I went into a space and, you know, uh, I I had a glance over, you know, the subtitles and I saw something new coming up there. It was a plus sign. I was like a bit confused. What is this? I clicked it and it was reactions. I mean, like, wow, amazing. Finally, I can participate in a space, you know, via desktop. It was a very good experience. Uh, I have been on vacations for like three, four days so away from my uh, desktop. Uh, I don't know what's up new, but three days ago I checked it out and it was working quite fine. So you've got the reactions on there. We've obviously been, a bit, been able to listen from desktop for quite some time. Is there any kind of hint that we might be able to speak via desktop any anytime soon? Is there any inkling of that coming through? I could see the button over there, request to speak. I tried to tap it uh, multiple times, but it's redundant as of now. But uh, since the sign is over there, that means, you know, it's coming very soon. Yeah, it's in the screenshot. So when you look at the screenshot we have in the Nest, you can see the reactions that he's able to do. I I tried desktop earlier in a live room and uh, I, I wasn't able to do. So I'm sure it's just being tested with a small group right now, but I would love to to be able to do that from desktop. Uh, but yeah, you can see there's that little mic button in the screenshot. So it does seem like that is going to be coming. And there was a space not too long ago from the Twitter Spaces team where they talked about this is something they are working on. And that w- that was going to be a goal that we would be able to speak from desktop at some point. Yeah, I know it was on kind of the, the future roadmap. And I think, you know, one of the things that LinkedIn audio seems to have got right is that people can switch, almost, you know, almost seamlessly from mobile to desktop. And that's something that people have found really useful. Um, and, you know, Twitter's always listening. Um, so it's not surprising to me. You know, as soon as we were able to hear it on the desktop, it seemed that eventually it would filter through that we would be able to do more than that um, in, in that space. I mean, I, I love how I can have the, the captions on and coming through. I find that much easier to look at on the desktop. Um, and, you know, actually the the um, speech to text is really quite good, I find. Um, you know, whereas on the mobile, I find that kind of takes up a bit much of the screen and there's so much going on on the mobile screen and it's so small. So, you know, I think there's, there's lots of benefits to being able to access spaces on the web. Um, there is one thing that um, Morgan actually commented on Legion's initial post around the fact that this um, tab that has appeared in this screenshot is labelled as spaces. I mean, what do we think about that? You know, we know that on the mobile app at the moment, spaces are being kind of hidden and, and shoved away under an audio tab, which also includes podcasts. That, that, that seems like a bit of kind of um, 
two-way thinking to me if we end up with spaces on the desktop but an audio tab on the mobile app. What, what do you think about that, Madeline? I know it's a little confusing, so I'm not sure about that. There needs to be consistency. I think it's just going to cause too much confusion. Like have it one way or the other across the board. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is the discoverability side of it as well. You know, there's, there's still, there's not kind of a natural way to find spaces on desktop. And there never really has been other than scrolling until you find someone with a purple ring around their profile picture. Um, so, you know, surely that needs to be kind of summed up as well. Well, that's in the other screenshot from Legion where it says search for the name of a space or host. It's also in the spaces section of the navigation on the left sidebar. And there's a little spot that says search spaces and you would type in, I guess, whatever it is you're looking for. And there's all happening, happening now and coming up. But, you know, we always like to remind our listeners, there's also spacesdashboard.com. No, they're not a paid sponsor. We just like using their free website because it's been the best place for spaces discoverability. Um, but interesting in this screenshot from Legion that it, it is something they're working on to bring discoverability into desktop. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. We don't know, you know, how long this is going to take, if it's really going to come together and go live for all of us. Uh, but I just think having more options is always a good thing. Yes, absolutely. I mean, Legion, can you see yourself switching over to desktop more often if you're able to do stuff over there? Most of the times, because, you know, being an Android user, uh, there has been, uh, I can say, almost zero discoverability of spaces. You know, I always uh, go for, you know, spaces dashboard. That has been my guide for, you know, almost two years now. Uh, but uh, I am able to see, you know, the spaces tab on desktop a few days. Uh, sometimes, you know, it disappears, but, you know, uh, I try to find a little hack over there. I mean, like, if you guys could, you know, just type in the URL, twitter.com slash I slash spaces. I mean, like, it might do wonders. At least it does for me. Um, you guys can give it a try. Okay, so we're all heading over there now to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us off the cuff, Legion. That's brilliant. Thanks so much. Thank you, Legion. Appreciate it. I would love, uh, Michael, what are your thoughts on spaces for desktop? I love it. I love the idea of being able, especially to host on the desktop, because um, like I'd mentioned before, I've used Club Deck for Clubhouse. And whenever I host or moderate on Clubhouse, I use that because I... I mean, I, I'm from a background of video production and, and video directing where I've got all these screens in front of me. And like, to me, it's just more natural when you're a power user of whatever you're doing that you're going to be sitting at a desktop. You got all the screens in front of you and all the, the, the stuff you can do. And I mean, just hosting on a phone, it can be very limiting and you got to swipe between screens and um, there, there's just so much advantage to having a desktop option for whichever platform or project you're working on. So I'm glad that LinkedIn has it. I'm glad that there is an option for Clubhouse, even though it's unofficial. And I'm glad that Twitter is finally rolling this out. So yeah, bring it on. Do you know what? I will be really excited when I can set the start point for my replay from the desktop and not have to try and still hate fiddling about with that tiny little button. It usually takes me a good five minutes after the space has ended to not only, I have to kind of find the point where I want it to start and then oh I don't know I've got fat fingers clearly I just cannot get it to go exactly where I want it to go if I could just do that with a mouse and like slide it across the screen I'd be well happy so yeah I'm really looking forward to that part of it <laughs> I agree 100 percent. that's like the most frustrating thing as a host when you're done and you want to go set the start time of the room for the replay and using that little tiny spot you have to get it just right on your finger and drag it across and it's a pain. So yes, it'll be nice when we can do all of this on desktop. I mean, they, what they could do is give us like, so that we could actually type in the start time, like give us a timestamp so we could find it and then just tap, put in the time <laughs> with numbers, because that's kind of a thing that you can do on a phone um, and, you know, not have to use a little slider. It's just not very, uh, very intuitive at all. Um, our next tweet is about something that I came across this week that I, I've, I've tried it several times and I can't make it work and I'm not sure if I'm just being silly but um, in the end I did create a video to show what my problem was. Um, as we discussed last week Madeline I've been trialing different titles for this space 
uh, just to kind of see whether or not um, it means more people might be interested in what we're talking about, trying to be a little bit less cryptic and a bit more obvious about what we're what we're here for and what we're chatting about. Um, and I set up this space this week and I put the title in and I just wanted to change it just slightly. I thought, oh, I could put that word in as well. And I went to edit it and I got to edit the the um, the title and add what I wanted, but then I couldn't get my on-screen keyboard to go away so that I could save my change. And it was really annoying. <laughs> I, I literally couldn't work out. I, I've pressed every button. So there's, there's a tweet um, in the nest that um, I have attached a, vi- a screen share video um, to to show you what I've done. If anyone can spot that I'm doing something really stupid where I should be able to just minimise my keyboard, then please do point it out to me and let me know. But as far as I could tell, I just could not get it to go away so I could save the change. It was very frustrating. I did tag host Celine um, and I'm not sure he's seen the video yet, but I'm sure he'll let me know if I'm being silly. I think it's a bug. I think you just happened to experience a bug. Did you try closing the Twitter app, uh, reopening, and then trying that edit again? Oh, I tried all the things. I tried all the things. And I that. even... And you powered down the phone too and then powered it back up? Yeah. Wow. And it still didn't work? And I even came across... Um, there was a Twitter update in the um, in the app store as well, which why this doesn't update automatically, I have no idea. I've never understood. It always used to. Yeah. It always did until Spaces came along. So I'm in a habit of checking the app store at least twice a week. Yeah. Um, and I updated the app and it, it still didn't help. I can see, George, you're waving madly, wildly at us. I'm assuming you have something you would like to say. Come and join the conversation. Have you had this issue, George? Have you had this problem where you can't make the keyboard go away? Yes, I have a cure for that. Oh, what is it? I spent an hour and a half a day or two ago. I almost called Madeline because I was sure I was doing something wrong. Um, and uh, I researched it, I tried everything, and then by accident, the keyboard went away. So I spent another hour trying to reproduce the weird little hand gesture that I made to, to, to make it go away. The upshot of it is, it's gonna be a little hard to explain it here, um, but it's a pinch, it's the pinch move. Uh, at, right at the top, all the way at the top, Put your thumb on the left and the, your forefinger on the right and pinch it and it'll go away. But you got to try a whole lot of different things. I, I'll try to make a movie of it. But um, it worked because I changed my conversationalist's um, title on Saturday to something a little bit better because I think 90% of the value of announcing a space is the title. Uh, I don't care how fancy to your card is or anything else 90 percent is the title same with books same with articles same with everything it's the title but don't you think this is a bug though george don't you think this is a bug because i've been able to do this fine in the past i haven't done it recently the the keyboard's supposed to go down by putting your finger at the top of the topmost you know the the, the border uh, right at the top of the keyboard and you just drag it down it's supposed to go away that's the standard across you know, the entire Apple um, iPhone. But so some, something, somehow they're not taking that, that cue into effect. So absolutely, it's a bug. Well, I did, um, I did use the hashtag Spaces Research, although I'm not too sure whether or not they're still scanning that and still looking at that. I'm sure they are. This was the hashtag that, you know, we were always told back in the early days when we were beta testing, if you've got any bugs or anything that you come across that doesn't work properly, Use hashtag spaces research and we can have a look at it and and see what's what. So um, I did I did that. So um, I don't know. May, maybe someone somewhere. I guess they need more than just me to say my keyboard doesn't work. I have one other idea that that might work. Like, would it work to possibly just like switch the toggle for record space off and back on, and that would make the keyboard go away or something? I don't know. It's bizarre. I'm going to try all of these things as soon as we've closed out the space. You realize. <laughs> There you go. That that was that was my um my my bug watch for this week um and my my sort of bugbear my frustration. But um thank you very much, George, for your for your input there. Thank you, George. I, I'm noticing an observation, and for our speakers I, I, and our listeners, I'm curious at the bottom here, like the mute and the reactions and everything. Everything is a little bit darker, and if I hit mute, it's a different kind of red. Have y'all noticed that? 
maybe with the new version of the iOS app. Everything looks darker, like it's been bolded just slightly. Ooh, it looks sa- it looks the same to me. Don's give, giving you 100%, so maybe we've got a thumb up there from Wimchick. It's just slightly different. It's, no, it's hardly noticeable. i tell you when it was noticeable. When we first started this room and I muted myself, the color of the red was a little different. And it just seemed more pronounced. And now, now that I'm really looking at these icons, it just seems like the outline is a little bit thicker and not as thin as it was. It's very subtle. It's very, very subtle. And it's like, okay, what's the re- Like, give us desktop spaces before you do something like that. Why, how is this helping us? How is just making it slightly bolder with these icons? What's the point? Give us spaces for desktop and we'll be a lot happier. That's it. Absolutely. I love that. Stop fiddling with the font and uh, give us something that's functional. <laughs> cool. Um, we've got just a couple of kind of news in briefs here, really, um, around crypto. We discussed uh, the crypto wallet with Morgan last week around token gated houses. We had uh, spotted another uh, tweet from Alessandro Paluzzi that was saying Clubhouse is working on the ability to connect a crypto wallet. But also Watcher.Guru um, here on Twitter has said that Twitter is reportedly developing its own wallet with support for crypto deposits and withdrawals. And we've also seen uh, some tweets there from Jane Wong about that. So I think all in all, um, to, to round that up in a nutshell, I think we can safely say that social audio, Web3, crypto, etc. is all coming into one place. And, uh, you know, we're all very excited to see what happens there and, and where that goes. Um, we had some news from Reddit this week as well that Morgan drew our attention to. There was a um, performance of Dracula in honour of the film's 30th anniversary over on Reddit Talks. Um, I think this is quite exciting, Madeline, don't you? Yeah, it sure seems interesting. I, I, I didn't get a chance to, to uh, investigate further and take a listen, but super interesting using uh, Reddit for that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's just the thought that, you know, we could have all of this amazing narrative, live narrative drama stuff going on on social audio. There's a lot of conversation, there's a lot of debate and discussion that goes on on these platforms, but I just love the fact that there is this whole other creative element. You know, we see it a little bit on Clubhouse with the various different um, music rooms that spring up over there. You know, they're really making use of the spatial audio, um, you know, really bringing music onto the social audio platforms in more of a way than it really appears over here, to be honest, on Twitter spaces. And just the thought that people could put something like that together, like a drama production with lots of different people talking, taking on characters, a bit of sound design. I mean, I'm all over that. I, I love that idea. Um, Michael, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a throwback to sort of the old radio show days. And we've, like you said, we've seen that on Clubhouse quite a bit. Not so much this year, but uh, the end of 2021, uh, we saw a couple of different programs that were held, I think, by the same people who did the Bram Stoker's Dracula on Reddit. But uh, just a couple of months ago, there was also a performance of Aladdin on Clubhouse where a, a team of people came together and there was all the different characters from I think it was the the remake musical, uh, the live action musical. They had uh, musical performances and they had people acting out and, and they changed their profile pictures to the different characters and it was really quite engaging. And you can go about your day and and listen into it and it was it's really cool. I I love that people are doing things like this. Yes, and that's it. That's exactly it, isn't it? It's just like the the kind of live radio play that you might have heard. Um, it's a real kind of throwback to what what you can do with audio and you know I'm, I'm really passionate about that side of it where you can bring something to people that they can imagine you know th- those images that you can present to people just by you know creating with sound I just I love all of that so I'm totally here for it and uh, yeah really exciting I think you know Reddit talks seems to be the place that at the moment that's trying out that sort of thing I don't know that it's particularly taking off over on Reddit Talks like it might be here on Spaces, like on Clubhouse. But there's certainly where the communities there are so um, integrated and, you know, they're with each other. I think they can grow things like that um, and and really push it forward and, and, and work together on creative projects in that way. So, yeah, really exciting to to see that, that's, that that one's happening. Definitely. And I want to do a quick shout out to Paul Armstrong. He DM'd me a tweet from Twitter Design I put it in the nest that did show that about 
the changes with some of these shapes and fonts and stuff that they did. I remember seeing this tweet last week, but like the first tweet in this thread, I was like, okay, whatever, brand new icons. It didn't look any different. So I just kept going, moved on, right? And now that I see this is like, I think the fourth tweet in the thread, they're specifically showing before and after when you're in spaces of what the icons and it's just slightly bolded. But I see this new one at the bottom of uh, of spaces here right now. It's, it's a little different. Amazing. I mean, that you know, that's your Twitter knowledge right there, Madeline, that you spotted it straight off. It's slightly more bold. It's, it's very subtle. It's very subtle. But, you know, it's like, OK, there's a way more things on spaces to do list they could have worked on. And although this seems more like a design thing, but still it's like, really? OK. All right. We'll take it. But there's a lot of other things we would like to have, too. Hi there, George. How are you? Hi. The thing I wanted to mention before is that um, for desktop, the thing that's overlooked that nobody mentions is if and when it goes on desktop, if, and I'm, I bet anything that they will overlook this, they won't do it this way, but if they use the entire screen, I could see 25, 50 people there. And I could see who's there. I can invite people up. I can. They they should take advantage of the real estate of the PC screen. I can almost guarantee you that they will not do that. It'll be on in the right hand column the way it is right now. It's severely truncated and almost utterly useless. But if they did it right, it would be amazing. Yeah, it would be great if it was a full screen space. So you can then see everybody's handles, their full names, maybe even a little bit of their bio, um, you know, something like that. I, I completely agree with you. And I see how that would be, you know, it would make the experience, it would enhance the experience on desktop. And, where, uh, and while they're at it, they should make the talker ID, instead of that tiny little purple wave, put it around the whole picture, make it bright color and instantaneous so that I can detect when somebody goes, <clears throat> You know, when somebody's clearing their throat preparatory to, to speak, I will often call on a hesitant speaker who I can see is trying to get their courage up because I can hear them clearing their throat. Nope, you can't, you know, you can't do that. Uh, it's very hard to do that. Yeah, I have to say that um, I mentioned at, at the top that I've been over on Clubhouse in a, in a room over there and I don't think either Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces really has got it right in terms of easily being able to identify who is speaking at the time. Um, you know, I, I literally had to stop and stare at my screen to work out who I was listening to on Clubhouse a moment ago. M potentially, maybe it's because it's in dark mode because it's the evening over here and it didn't show up so well, I don't know. But surely their designers should be thinking about these things. I want something that screams at me, this person is talking right now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're See, not that the first. Tells, that, <laughs> that, that tells me that these are engineers who are not running spaces because all of us would probably list what, what used to be called talker ID. Uh, I don't know what it's called now. Um, th we put that right at the top of our list. Yeah, I think it's super important not only for hosts to be able to call on people, but for people who are listening, like I was in that scenario, I wanted to then go and follow the person that was talking. And, you know, surely that's part of what these platforms are trying to do. You know, they want us to build relationships. That's what they're selling it to us as. So in order for me to build a relationship, I need to know who was talking so I can then easily go and follow them so I can make that connection with that person. And if it's not obvious and I've got to fiddle about to the point that someone else is now talking and I can't see who that was, then the, the moment's lost and it's gone. So, yeah, yeah. Michael, what do you think? Yeah, you know, it's interesting over on Clubhouse is that uh, you're not the first person to complain about that. They, uh, there have been a number of people who've said, in dark mode, I can't tell who's speaking. Like the ring around people's icons are just not bold enough. Can we have a more bold ring in dark mode? The other thing that's kind of interesting and remarkable about Clubhouse is that there are some other screens that you can go to where it is easy to tell who is speaking. If you swipe over yeah. to the room chat, you can actually see a bar at the top of the room chat and, and it shows whoever is speaking at the time. When you're in the actual room with everybody's icons, it's not nearly as clear, which is kind of strange. But there's also been requests for that same bar at the top of those rooms. We'll see what happens with that. Also, the desktop version seems to have it, have it right. 
or at least better. Yeah, Club Deck has a red ring yeah. that actually goes. Uh, the microphone, when it's unmuted, is red, and then uh, there's a more prominent ring around each person. So yeah, just need to do some tweaking. That's what we like. Some tweaks to make it easier for us to see. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Hi there, Ray Ray. How are you today? I'm doing great. Happy Win Win Wednesday. I just had one question. How are you editing your audio and how do you do that? Or what kind of software would make it easy for me to edit? That's what I'm interested in. Cool. So you're capturing, are you capturing stuff from social audio you're recording while you're going live? Yeah, exactly. I- I have a lot of it and I'm trying to narrow it down so I can start editing right after I finish or the next day so I can just start putting them in categories, you know, like style categories, um, tech categories or whatever. Cool. So for those of you who don't know, Ray Ray has um, been working on on building up spaces and Clubhouse and has recently uh, done a great fashion show over here on Spaces where she talked through a whole load of different hats that she's created, all the stories behind the designs. It was a great space, really enjoyed it. And I'm sure the replay's still around as well if you want to go over to Ray Ray's uh, timeline and, and find it over there. Um, she showed pictures of, of the hats in the nest and it was all lots of fun. So yeah, I can totally see why you would want to then capture that and repurpose it in much the same way as we do here. So um, for us on Spaces, um, we, we both myself and Madeline each week record locally, which is where uh, I'm recording over here in the UK in my little makeshift studio. And Madeline is recording her side over in Texas, where she is using her Zoom recorder um, as well. After the show, uh, Madeline dropboxes her audio to me and I put it together back into a conversation and use that audio. And I do that because it's higher quality audio than the actual Spaces audio would be. So um, that's the first thing to say in terms of how we use the audio and edit it for our podcast. That said, lots of people and I can see a couple of them in here, Paul Armstrong's one, will take the audio directly from their space and will use that audio file as a podcast or to repurpose it um, for, for, for other means. Um, and, and that is totally doable as well. Um, it's not downloadable yet from Twitter, so you can't easily just hit a button and get your audio back. However, there are various... Uh, different tools, different third-party tools that we've mentioned before um, and that you can access. I I use Backstage by Headliner as one of them, uh, where you can then download the audio afterwards. There's also FlowGym, which we've spoken about before, um, and that allows you to get an MP3 version of the live audio. Um, In terms of what I use to actually edit, it's a personal choice for me that I use Adobe's Audition. That is a paid-for platform. It costs me every month to use Audition but it is the platform that I was trained on uh, at the radio station. So it's the one that I know and love. Um, It allows me to, uh, as I say, use a multi-track whereby I can put mine and Madeline's audio back into a conversation. But equally, I can can also edit a single track using that as well. Um, So, yeah, I mean, in terms of actual editing skills, you know, it's as easy or difficult, depending how you want to look at it, as highlighting sections of audio and control X for delete, control C for copy and control V for paste. However, there's, you know, levels of skill to it, depending what you want to do with the the end product. Um, And there are free platforms that you can use to edit as well. So if you're not wanting to have this monthly outlay with Adobe, uh, there are things like um, Audacity, which is a free Um, software that you can download from the internet which lots of people use and there's also Reaper as well which takes a little bit more learning than Audacity but is also um, a free one that is very customizable. Lots of videos on YouTube I would totally point you in the direction of Mike Russell from Music Radio Creative. Um, He will he does everything A to Z from the simplest of edits over on Audacity to the most complex of edits in Audition Um, so definitely look him up I can see we have hands here from George and Michael I don't know whose hand went up first but I'm going to go to Michael oh thank you yeah the other software I was going to mention if you're an Apple user Ray Ray or anybody else who's listening uh, GarageBand is a great app that's available for Mac or iOS or iPadOS so take a look at that as well 
Yeah, good, good call. And I know some people do actually do a screen recording of the audio while they're live in on social audio. So Spaces or Clubhouse will have the, the screen recorder on their phone running so that actually they're not looking about to download it from anywhere. Or, I mean, in the past, I've played the replay back in real time from Spaces, from Twitter, and recorded that back into my um, my audition or onto my, my Zoom recorder, depending on, you know, whether or not I knew I was going to need the recording or haven't been able to get hold of it, that kind of thing. So that's another workaround that I've used in the past. George? Can I put in a plug for Descript? It's amazing. It's magic. I have a lot of experience with Audacity. Uh, and with those things, you need to... You need to edit the wave with the script. It makes a transcript using Google's AI, which is the best uh, speech to text AI there is. It's, it is unbelievably accurate. You can search for words. You come to a word, the word, somebody says shit on the, on the show and they, you search for that word. You, you delete the word. It deletes the audio part of the waveform and bang it's gone you can also do ubs and ahs and all kinds of stuff like that automatically last one i did was an hour and a half took out 500 ums in one in one recording automatically in a second or two and it also it also takes out pauses uh user specified pause length so you can tell it i want everything above one second everything above a half a second Whatever it is, user specified, it'll take out all of those things. It does a lot of other things automatically as well. You can cut out a whole speaker. It does. It, it is magic. It's so much beyond an audio editor that it's it's what I dream dreamt of for thirty or forty years. Well, and I just want to say, I mean, Descript is great for beginners because just like George is describing, it's just a matter of removing words and it takes it out of the audio. Is is I remember when they came out with that a few years ago, it, it just seemed very revol- uh, revolutionary. I mean, so interesting that you could simply just remove uh, some words and it's gone automatically. I love it. The only, the only problem with it is that it's not live. So I can't use it on Madeline's session at Saturday mornings, but Saturday afternoons. But um, uh, I have to still have to use Otter, but it's like Otter with uh, with editing capability. Ray, Ray, did that cover everything that you you wanted? I'm sorry, it was a bit of a download, really, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. It covered it. It probably covered more than I need in a blanket, uh, but um, it covered everything. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm just working on um, I'm working on something a little different than most people do their things because everybody does audio, but you got to know how to do the mix of audio and music is the way I think to go. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, as I say, you know, start with the basics, start simple and build up. And, you know, even down to some of the podcasters that I work with, you know, we start with a simple audio edit and then we're building the different sound design elements, whether that's production um, you know, that might change over time to really reflect their sonic branding. It's, you know, there's so many different stages and steps. But the absolute thing I can guarantee is that if you don't take that first step, you ain't going to get any further. So it is all about starting with what you've got and then really building upon that. So awesome. Great to have you here, Ray Ray. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you to all of our speakers who came on and uh, shared so much great stuff. And we're available in all of your favorite podcast apps. We're out there, uh, All Things Audio. You can also go to allthingsaudiopodcast.com as well. You certainly can. And you can catch us here on Twitter and use the hashtag allthingsaudio. And we'll pick that up throughout the week. So that's it for this week. But thank you so much to everyone that's been here in the space with us and those of you listening. And we'll catch up with you next week. Bye, everybody. 